Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at constant acceleration and deriving those SUVAT formulas so we can answer questions from exercise 11e. Now in the exam you may be asked to yeah, derive those SUVAT formulas based on the principles of differentiation and integration from this uh, series of videos. So the first question here is can we derive V equals U plus AT given these conditions? So what we'll do to start off with is we'll integrate acceleration with respect to time and that's obviously equal to velocity and we know that that is true from this series of videos. Okay, so let's accelerate, uh, let's integrate, sorry, acceleration. So treat A as just a number, let's treat it as the number 7. Integrating 7 will give us 7t. So in this case here it's just A times t plus c. Now c here is the constant of integration and we'll have to substitute in our initial conditions. So uh, at time t equals 0, v equals u. So see that happen there. And you get c, u equals c. So then substitute that into your original equation here. So u is replaced with the letter c. So c is replaced with the letter u. So it's just now u plus a t. So there we are. So v equals u plus a t has come straight from integrating acceleration and then substituting an initial condition to get that u part. Okay, we should be able to carry on further from here. So um, integrating, um, integrating velocity now with respect to time will give us a displacement. Now remember previously we've shown that v equals u plus a t so substitute in u plus a t. And remember u and a here are just numbers. So it's just uh, something like 3 plus 5t or something like that. So it's uh, integrate u with respect to t. And you get u times t. Think of u as the number 3. That would just be 3t. So it's just here ut. Uh, plus a t squared over 2 uh, plus c. Um, Think of, the, think of it as like a 5t, it'd be 5 over 2t squared, wouldn't it? So this is what we get here. U, so s equals ut plus at squared over 2 equals uh, plus c as well, constant of integration. Uh, when t equals 0, displacement is equal to 0. So substitute those in, and c comes out to be 0. So just uh, substituting that back into our original formula now, c is equal to 0, and then just rearranging the algebra slightly, we get s equals ut plus a half a t squared, which is exactly the SUVAT formula that we looked at there. And both of these questions here have come from thinking about what the area underneath the graph will be. The area under the graph of a acceleration uh, type graph would be velocity, and the area underneath a velocity time graph would be displacement. And that's exactly what we've got here. All right then, so your turn to have a go at some similarly related questions. Uh, see, pause the video and see how you get on. Right then, let's have a look at these questions here then. So a particle moves on the x-axis, constant acceleration A. Particle has initial velocity 0 and initial displacement x. After time t seconds, this particle has velocity v and x, so an s meters. Prove that s equals half a t squared plus x. So slightly different to our SUVAT formula, but we've got different initial conditions, so that's going to change our formula. So in this case here, the first thing we're going to do is uh, integrate acceleration. So in this case here, an integrating acceleration would just give us a t plus c. Now the initial conditions we're going to plug in here is initial velocity 0. So t equals 0, v equals 0. So substituting that in, v, u, sorry, 0 equals 0 plus c. So c is equal to 0. So therefore our formula for v is equal to a t. There's no u here. We usually assume that initial velocity is u, so that's why the u hasn't appeared this time, because in our initial conditions, initial velocity was equal to zero. 
The next thing we'll do now is integrate again to work out s. So s is equal to the integral of velocity, which is equal to the integral of at dt, uh, which is equal to half at squared plus c. Now our initial conditions this time is that initial displacement is x meters. So here, when t equals 0, displacement is x meters. So it's x equals 0 plus c. So c is therefore equal to x. So therefore, s is equal to this formula here, but c is equal to x. So it's half a t squared plus x. And that's what they're looking for us to prove. Now this all happened here because acceleration was constant. It's just some letter, it's just some number. It's just filling in for say a seven or a minus three or something like that. So the, um, the a here is just representing a number. So it's just a times t when you integrate. For question four here, uh, which of these equations for displacement describe a constant acceleration? Well, the only way we can find that out is if we double differentiate. So in this case here, it will equal 4t minus t squared. And ex um, differentiate again, and we get 4 minus 2t. Now, is that constant acceleration? No, because as time changes, acceleration changes. So no, this one is not constant acceleration. Is this one here? Well, v is equal to 4, so therefore a is equal to 0. Is that constant acceleration? No, not really. It's no acceleration. That's what it is. This one here, uh, v is equal to um, 1 half t, and differentiate that again, and we get a half. Is that constant uh, acceleration? Yes, it is. It's always accelerating by a half or 0 0.5 meters per second squared. With this one here, I can see from the bottom of it, that's definitely not going to be constant acceleration because when I double differentiate it, that power of t is going to be a four. And this one here, s equals six, where there's no velocity, there's no acceleration, so it's not really a constant acceleration. So the only one here that was, I would say, is part c. I suppose you could say b and e were, but I don't really think that acceleration of zero uh, constitutes as constant acceleration. All right then, so there we are. That's finished the mechanics section then. So have a go at questions from 11E. And now once you've finished this video, have a go at lots of the practice papers and have a go at lots of questions um, to make sure you're ready and prepared for your summer exams. Best of luck with those. And uh, thanks very much for watching.